not too long ago, I was working with uh, a wife, a husband and wife came in and, and, and my, my belief system in regards to uh, relationship coaching when it comes to uh, spouses, when it comes to uh, a couple, is to not work together. I don't believe in that old model of marriage counseling. I don't believe in it at all, where two people sit down and, and they bicker for an hour, and then they come back the next week. I just don't believe in it. So I have couples come in, and, and I think I have a whole video on YouTube here about my philosophy on that, so I won't go into it again, but um, for 20-something years, we've shattered that old model, which is one of the reasons why I know we've had such great success in regards to um, couples and, and marriage counseling coaching. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll have them come in the first time, I'll talk, and then I work with them individually. And this is what happened during a recent session. Hi, I'm David Essel. Uh, the, the, the husband came in and sat down, and he first went right into it. And he goes, listen, you know, we've been together for five years now, and it's been the same thing since we, before, before we got married. I was hoping that it would have changed when we got married. Mistake number one. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's the truth. And women. It's the truth. Hoping that your partner is going to change just because you get married. I've been there, done that. It's called insanity. <laughs> anyway, getting back to the point, he said, you know, she always is late. Uh, she'll forget appointments. She'll schedule three or four things at the same time. And at the end of all of this chaos on a weekly basis, she'll say, but it wasn't my intention to hurt you. It wasn't my intention to forget. It wasn't my intention to double book. It wasn't my intention to be an hour late for lunch. It wasn't. And he said, I'm going crazy. I'm going absolutely nuts. So at the end of the session, and she had a chance to talk and, and basically her defense uh, system for this whole thing was, David, it's just the truth. It's not my intention. I know I do it all the time. I frustrate him. I've been frustrating him for years. I frustrate my family, but you know what? I just can't change. And that was the key. She didn't want to change. So we separated, and the next several weeks I worked with the, the, the young lady. And every time we got to this core, I said, what's the core issue? Why do you think people are always late, double book? Um, why do you think people you know, do these things and create chaos and drama in their life? And so we got to some of the bottom line of it. And let me tell you something that was really fascinating. This is the environment she grew up in. She grew up in this very lackadaisical, laissez-faire type of an attitude. Um, there was no real pressure to hold to your word. You know, there, I will, I'll say that there wasn't a really great training in integrity. Integrity is walking your talk, doing what you say you're going to do. So she grew up in that environment. Now, her mom and dad believe that, if, in conversations with them, that she's taken it to the nth degree, but they admit, when I contacted them, they admitted that, you know what, there was never really a big deal. If someone was 45 minutes late for lunch or someone was an hour late for dinner, it was never really that big of a deal. So she's brought that forward. Now, here's something interesting. With a different partner, it wouldn't be a big deal to this day. If she had married someone that had that same flexible, loose, uh, peace, love, you know, all that kind of stuff of a, a belief system, it wouldn't be important to this day. But she didn't marry that type of a person. She married someone that, you know, specifically said it's really important that we hold these guidelines. And so that's where the conflict and the battle began. So the number one thing that we had to do is we had to see where did this foundation come from, you know. And I said, I believe it's not your intention, but guess what? Just because it's not your intention doesn't mean that we continue doing it because do you see the chaos and drama you've created? At this point, of course, she's in tears, you know, and it's not because I'm blaming her. I'm saying we have to wake up, and she understands that. Then the next step was to get into what are other reasons that someone would be late all the time, double book, pull these things, you know, and, and some individuals might say it's a personality type. I don't really believe so. I believe in, in something totally different, and my belief is, is that that's what her norm is. Her norm is chaos and drama. And so, in order for her to stay comfortable in life, even though she gets ridiculed for it, even though it creates all kinds of pain in her relationships, even though her friends have told her that this is a little insane, that this happens all the time, because it's her norm, she always goes back to that. So she'll change for four, five, six, seven days. But then that's uncomfortable. She's used to not getting a lot of positive feedback in life. Her norm is chaos and drama, so she continues to go back to that norm. Isn't that amazing? Like some people would move in the opposite direction, right? They would say, okay, this is crazy. This isn't worth it. I've got to get my scheduling together. I've got to figure out a different way to live. 
And however, in her life, it's not the case. On another video, I did something called getting big in life. And that's when we want to become more successful. We do what we know would never work. And with her, I said, what do you know would never work? And she goes, you know what? I'm, I forget what she said, some kind of a sign, you know, like Sagittarius or something. And she said, as a Sagittarius, you know, like, and I don't know if that's the correct sign, but she said, we're just flighty. We're just airy. Our feet are on, off the ground. We're not grounded and whatever. And I said, well, you know what? If you want to find someone who's like that in relationship, then if you don't want to change, go find someone. Like, don't torture yourself and don't torture your husband anymore. You know, if you really believe that you can't change because of some birth sign, then you're going to probably have to make a decision in this relationship because he's ready to leave. And he was, you know, and I said, and you can't blame him. You know, the only thing you can blame him for is the fact that he wanted you to change and be different. And I can't blame you for the fact that if you don't want to change, but if you want to stay in the relationship, you're going to have to. And this was a lot of introspection she had to do. And we don't know what the end result in her life is going to be. I don't know if they're going to stay together, but I do know that his interest in life, as he stated from the beginning, and her interest in life have sort of been at the opposite. He's saying, I really desire this type of a relationship. She says, I do too, but I can't do it. So do you see the conflict right there? So there's going to have to be some type of flexibility brought in from both of them if they want to hold it together. One of the things I recommended to him is to work on his flexibility. But here's the key. If she's not working on her ability to stay scheduled and organized and to do things she doesn't like to do, like have a daily planner and figure out ahead of time what she's going to be doing where, then this relationship won't work. So here, this is what we come down to. Your best intentions don't mean anything if they're not followed up with your words and your actions. In other words, the intentions are always based on words. You know, I didn't intend to hurt you. I didn't intend to disappoint you. I didn't intend to lie. I didn't intend to steal. I didn't intend to drink that much. All these intentions are a bunch of just words. What we have to do is look at what my actions are. And in the case of someone who's working on a little um, less than a connected, grounded presence here on earth, she's going to have to follow up her words. It wasn't my intention with some kind of action in the physical world, i.e. daily scheduling, to show to herself that she can change. And trust me, ladies and gentlemen, I've worked with hundreds of people in my career as a, as a master life coach who have come to me with that, that they're artistic, they're creative, they're a little spacey, they're a little too spiritual, they're a little something. But they've mastered the art of scheduling, but it was hard work. Just like I've worked with people that were very rigid in their thought process, very left brain, very logical thinkers, who've had to be mal a little bit and become a little bit more flexible in life. But the only way either side can change is if they're doing something physical, action steps on a daily basis that are uncomfortable, that are ripping them out of their old comfort zone in order to shift to a new behavior. Now, if she wants to change, she can, you know, and if she wants to save the marriage, she can, absolutely. But when when she even admits that on a weekly basis, you know, she's, she's late almost every day to all these appointments that she has, that she's always late to meetings with her husband and dinners with her husband, she said, it's just, I know I'm creating absolute chaos. So it's going to have to be up to her to realize that her intentions don't mean anything. It's going to be her actions. If you find yourself in this situation, this is a specialty of mine, working with people, shifting them into a different thought process, the logical into the flexible and the way too flexible into the logical world. World, I can help you cross that barrier and create a less chaotic, less drama-filled, more peaceful existence. Contact me at talkdavid.com, T-A-L-K-David.com. Share this video. Oh my God, if you know some people that are highly rigid or highly loose and they need to see this, let them see You know that, that this doesn't have to be the case. There's reasons behind it. It just doesn't have to be the case. And don't forget to sign up for YouTube for all of our videos, okay? Just subscribe. I'm David Essel. Have a great day.